Good morning, lovely City Church family. Um, Ollie here, self-isolating <laughs> in my uh, in my study, leading you in worship um, online. Um, great, wouldn't have seen that coming a year ago, but here we are. Um, the situation's changed a lot in this world, hasn't it, over the last few weeks? Um, but when the darkness gets darker, God's people's song gets louder. And we're going to sing loud together this morning. We're going to sing of the hope that we have in our God. Um, kids, join in, sing, sing the words. The lyrics should have been sent out to you in an email and they're beneath this video. So um, follow along with the lyrics. They're going to be songs that we know as a church. They're going to be our own church songs um, and a hymn as well. Um, in there and um, I'm aware it's Mother's Day as well today so happy Mother's Day and uh, and dads um, if you're in families dads you um, you involve the kids give the mums a bit of time um, to worship it says this in Psalm 105 I give thanks to the Lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the people sing to him sing praises to him tell of all his wondrous works glory in his holy name let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. That's what we want to do um, this morning. Even through tough situations and tough circumstances, we want to rejoice in God who's seated on the throne and he never changes. So let's pray and let's sing together. Jesus, we know that you are seated on the highest throne. We know that you're worthy of all praise and honour. And Jesus, we know that the time seems dark at the moment, but we know that your gospel light shines brightly. In your name. Amen. Let's sing together. Praise. 
where you are, um, if you're by yourself or if you're with um, friends or family around you, why don't you just start praying where you are, say a couple of quick prayers and thank God for his greatness, thank God that you can sing to him and that you can make much of him. So let's do that now, let's, let's take a few seconds to, um, to pray to him, um, to thank him for who he is. Jesus, we thank you so much that you're the God of this earth. Thank you so much that you're the God of our lives. Jesus, thank you so much that you are here with us. Jesus, thank you so much that your love and your grace is so sweet. Amen. Amen. Let's sing of his grace together. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. situation now. When darkness seems to fill the earth and hope seems far away, the church will rise and sing that song of God. Oh 
my rock In you I place my hope When troubles overwhelm me I cling to you my saviour My trust is in your great love Even through the storms You hold me with your kindness of my heart You are my portion forever You are the one who satisfies me You're my great hope You are You will never leave My rock, in you I place my hope When troubles overwhelm me I cling to you, my saviour My trust is in your great love And even through the storms You hold me with your kindness Your love, you'll never leave us. 
sing this where you are. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. You'll never leave us. Oh. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. You'll never leave us. It's the truth, Jesus. We believe that your love conquers fear. We believe that your love is stronger even than the grave. Oh, Jesus, your love keeps us going. Your love is what we cling to. Your love is our hope, Jesus. Thank you so much that you showed your love for us in this, that you gave up your life for us upon a cross. Thank you, Jesus, that we know what true living hope looks like because you conquered the grave conquered and defeated death and you're coming back Jesus we believe this as a church we want our songs to rise louder than before louder than ever before we want our prayers to rise up higher and louder than they ever have done before Jesus we don't want to shrink back in these times we want your church to sing to pray to rejoice all the more loudly Jesus our hope is in you in your name amen Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praising together. Thanks so much for lifting up your songs where you are, all across um, Canterbury and Whitstable, wherever you are um, this morning. God bless you all. See you all soon. Bye. Good morning, church family. Martin here. Um, coming to you at what is a unprecedented time for us as a people, for us as a nation, and for us as the nations, this is something we've not seen before in what is going on. We find ourselves in a time of a global pandemic where we're seeing all areas of life being affected. This week, we've seen schools being announced that they'll be closing. We've seen uh, the government telling us to work from home. We've been seeing that the church has had to uh, pause gatherings of a physical kind in response to the need and the issues that we are facing right now. We wanted to speak to you this morning and I wanted to speak to you this morning with a message that I genuinely hope and pray will be of comfort and encouragement for every saint that watches this in these strange times. Before we get into the Word of God, I want to start by saying I recognise that this is strange. Normally on a Sunday we would be gathering together in Canterbury or in Chatham or in Whitstable and yet instead we are in our homes uh, and we are watching this video. But let me encourage you with all of my heart that God is still with us and at work in us. God wants to speak to you through this preach. I genuinely believe that. He wants to strengthen your heart. He wants to uh, give you a vision for how he's going to be at work in your life, in your family's life, in your friend's life, in your neighbor's lives, in the area around you, in this nation and the nations. God is still at work. But we must start by being real about the challenge. Already this week from Monday when the government announced that anyone that has any symptoms related to uh, COVID-19 should self-isolate for 14 days, we found that there were numerous people in our church that had to move to two weeks in self-isolation. We need to be real about the challenges that that brings. We are made for community. Suddenly we have to remove ourselves from that for the well-being of others around us. If that's you, if you find yourself in self-isolation at the moment, we are praying for you. We love you. We want to serve you and help you however we can. But please be real about the challenges that you're facing. We've, we see uh, ourselves in an uncertain time. For those of us that are self-employed, work in the hospitality sector, have zero-hour contracts, suddenly our financial situation seems incredibly uncertain. Our work situation seems incredibly uncertain. There is uncertainty in many areas. The teachers amongst us, even those who are working in the emergency services, there is vast amounts of uncertainty that we are facing right now that we need to be real about. And we must be real about the health risks that we are facing. To hear our Prime Minister say that there will be many families that have to say goodbye to loved ones because of this virus is a serious thing. And we would be foolish to ignore that. So we want to start 
this time by saying, let's be a people that are real about the challenges. In an age where social media says, just show the good stuff. Friends, let's not put a glittering image out for the world to see. Let's be those that are real about the fears that we face and yet the hope that we find. Because I do believe although these challenges are real and serious, there is great opportunity for the people of God and for the church in this time. I want to highlight a few. For us in our culture in the West, in, in the UK, in Canterbury and Charlton, we have lived with a lie for too long that we are all going to live till we're 100 years old and we will die in our sleep peacefully. Whereas the truth is, and the Bible teaches, that actually life is incredibly fragile. We have no guarantee of what tomorrow will bring. And what COVID-19 has done is it has uh, reminded us, it has held a mirror up to the truth that life is fragile and that we are vulnerable. It was a great opportunity for us here, friends, to speak the hope of the gospel, that actually this life isn't all that we have, that Christ has won us an eternity that means that we can be confident, even in the face of such extremities as we're facing right now, we can be a confident people. Why? Because we know a God that is eternal and that offers eternal life. Suddenly there's opportunity for us to speak into the lives of those that we love who don't know Christ and are concerned by this, point them to the eternal hope we have in Jesus. I believe there's opportunities for us here as we're watching on the news, uh, supermarkets being uh, kind of cleaned out, nothing left, people caring for themselves, pushing other people out of the way to get what they need. There is uh, suddenly on a global scale being shown the depravity of the human heart and that this lie that we have believed that we're all good, every single person is, is born good, we're all good, and then we may make some bad mistakes. We're saying, no, actually, intrinsically, in the hearts of humanity is selfishness. And again, there is a chance for us to shine the gospel into that. That yet, despite that, God loves the world. God so loved the world that he sent his only son, so that those who believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. It's the hope that we can bring in light of this. And as many find that the foundations on which they've built their life upon turn out to be sand as they crumble and fall, the work, those uh, businesses that people have poured year upon year to building suddenly could be gone in the blink of an eye. People's health suddenly could be gone in the blink of an eye. People's freedoms and liberties suddenly could be gone in the blink of an eye as they're self-isolated. Whatever it is, we can point people to the rock. That means that you can build upon and know that you are secure. Friends, I want to encourage you with all of my heart. This is a significant moment for the church, for us to stand up and to shine the light that Christ has put in us. And that's actually what I want to spend today looking at, is what is our response? How can we be a people of faith in a time of fear? Because I look and I feel like the church has three uh, different ways we could respond to what we are facing in front of us. The first is we could be those that respond out of fear. That there is so much fear around us. There is so much information about how serious this is and how dangerous it is and the importance of, of washing our hands and self-distancing and all of those things are massively important. But what can happen is it can start to filter into our hearts and we begin to be defined by fear. Our decisions are based by fear. We, we're not taking faith into consideration. We're fearful of our own health, of the health of those we love. And so we are starting to respond with a fearful manner which means that the way we speak, the way we act, the way we are, we retreat in every manner and in every way. It's an option that we have for a response for us. The second one actually is not one of fear, it's one of foolishness, that we ignore all that's going on around us. We pay no attention to the experts and what they're saying, to the government and what they're saying, to the people around us and what they're saying. They're all overreacting. They're being silly and foolish. And so we just carry on with life. We continue to go out and connect with people and hug and shake hands and do whatever we want to do because everyone's overreacting to it. There is a foolish response that some in the church could respond to or there is the response of faith, which is somehow finding the right blend and the right balance of taking into account all that's been said and taking seriously the counsel from the government and from the experts and from those around us, but also not allowing fear to define our decisions, but faith to define our decisions. Now, it's important I say this at the start, because sometimes when people hear that, they think, right, for example, take us as a church, the faith decision would have been to have met in person this Sunday. That's faith. The fact that we've gone for this and you're watching this in your homes, that means that we have been shaped by fear. I want to say that is not true. 
Actually, you could be meeting together right now and it be, you could be doing it because of fear rather than because of faith. Actually, we believe this is a faith decision we've made. We believe that actually God has led us to this point. We feel conviction and clarity that this is the most wise and loving decision that we could make that brings glory to God, that serves the church and serves the community around us. Friends, we want to be a people of faith. Faith isn't just turning off our brains and making silly decisions. Faith is following the nudge of God in light of what is going on around us. And so I want to try and look very briefly this morning at how we can be a people of faith in a time of fear. And so if you've got your Bibles, uh, do open them to uh, Matthew chapter 5. And we're going to be in a very famous passage today. I just felt led in my prayers this week to, to unpack this a bit for us. And we're in verse 13. This is Jesus speaking and he says these words. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you that this is profitable for us, for our teaching, for our growth, for our encouragement, for our correction. And Lord, we ask that by your spirit, you would be at work in each one of us as we hear your word today. Speak to us, Lord. Come and comfort hearts. God, come and bring peace into anxious hearts. God, bring faith into fearful hearts. God, bring healing into hurting hearts. Lord God, we pray by your spirit that you would use your word and what I have to say, Lord God, to mobilise your saints, to be a people of faith in a time of fear, we pray in your name. Amen. So I just want to look at two keys I see in this passage on how we can be a people of faith in a time of fear. The first one is, I think, Jesus highlighting for us our security in Christ. And secondly, our distinctiveness in Christ. So let's start by looking at our security. You see, one of the dominating narratives that we are seeing through this COVID-19 pandemic is one of selfishness. That is what, that one of the biggest narratives we're seeing is one of the selfishness, the, the innate selfishness of humanity. As I've said, you just gotta watch and see people fighting over toilet roll, of people buying mountains worth of toilet roll so that they can be safe in their home and know that they've got what they need to be able to survive. If you go to the supermarkets, I mean, I went the other day and I was shocked at how empty the shelves were, there was hardly anything there because people are thinking of themselves, buying for themselves and ensuring that they are well. And the world's watching on in disbelief. Many of us, we cannot believe that this is what is going on, but the Bible tells us we actually shouldn't be that surprised by this reaction. The Bible tells us actually that the root of sin, if you go right back to the start of the Bible in Genesis, you see the root of sin was humanity saying, I know best and I am most important. Forget what God said. God may have told me not to do that, but actually I think it's right. I think it's better. That's what I'm gonna do. It's, it's built into every human being. We are born into this mindset that we know best, that we are the wisest, cleverest, uh, most able, most secure, most important person. It is deep in the depths of our hearts. Every human being has that mindset. And that has been shown at the moment in what we're seeing. And so we see that the Bible teaches us that because of this, because of this mindset of I know best, I care for myself, put myself first, dog eat dog world, survival of the fittest, however you want to word it, actually what that brought into the world was division. It brought division between God and humanity. So we were separated from him. We couldn't come close to him because he's this holy, perfect God and our imperfection means that we can't come close but it also brought division between ourselves in families and in households and in friendships and in neighborhoods. You see the breakdown of relationship because of sin and the innate heart of humans, which is that I know best. I don't care what you think. I think this, and so this is what I'm going to do. But the glorious good news of the gospel is that we have a God who brought reconciliation. We have a God who saved us by grace through faith. 
is the words that we hear. And this is the God who then brought us together with one another and together with him. And so as we face this pandemic and this issue, friends, we need to know that there is a hope. And the hope isn't in people, the hope is in Christ. Hebrews 12 verse 2 tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. And I want to say this to you today, church. The first and most important thing we can do as believers in moments like this is to ensure that our eyes are fixed on Christ. One of my favourite verses in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians, it says, May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ. We read in Jude, it says, keep yourself in the love of God. This is the fundamental call for every believer every single day, but especially in these seasons, is to be a people that are captivated by the love of God. As Jesus tells us in the Gospels, that we are called to be a people that abide in him. Friends, this is a season for abiding. And so going back to the verse that we read, what I love about the words of Christ here, did you see it? How he defines who we are, he says, you are the salt of the earth. Verse 13, verse 14, you are the light of the world. Friends, you already are these things because of Christ. One of the dangers we will face is that we could be those who, who believe the lie that our hope in this season is we've just got to try harder. I'm scared and so I've got to try harder to be brave. Um, I don't know what to do, so I need to create a plan in order for me to uh, flourish through this. I am in self-isolation, so I have to read my Bible more and pray more so that God protects me and watches over me. Friends, that is a lie. That's not what Christ is calling us to do. Here, what we see is that by knowing Christ, we are these things. And we remain these things, how? By knowing Christ, by living in him and abiding in him. The Bible teaches us that as Christians, we have union with Christ. What that means is that we are in him. When you become a believer, the scripture tells us that God removes your heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh. The scriptures tell us that God himself comes and lives in us. And we live in him. We are seated in the heavenly places with Christ. We are united with him. And so this season ahead isn't a call to strive. It's not a call to work hard. Our primary call is to rest in the knowledge and the love of God. How are we doing on that? Can I ask, how have we done this week on putting God first? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and everything else will fall in line. Have we been a people this week who have sought first the kingdom? Or have we sought first the, the daily briefings from the government? Have we sought first the, that WhatsApp message from that friend who knows something before you do? Have we sought first the, the websites that we're reading that, that alleviate the fears that we have? Have we sought first the counsel from friends? Have we sought first the, the food that we need to have in our house? Or have we sought first the Lord? We have a call as a people to focus on Christ. I believe that Jesus in, in this passage that we're reading here is wanting to emphasise to the saints, listen, you are these things in me. Your confidence doesn't come from anywhere other than me. When life is going well, when life is difficult, your confidence doesn't change. Why? Because I've made you what you are. You are these things because you are in me. Let's be a people that remind ourselves of that. I believe that there is a call over the Christians in this season to be culture shapers. I believe that we are being called to be those that, that shape the very culture of our homes, first and foremost, of our neighbourhoods, of the town, the village, the city we live in, and actually of the nation and the nations. At the last Breakthrough Prayer we had, before this had really kicked off, uh, we were praying together and Megan, one of our students, uh, prayed and she prayed out and she said, I've really felt God put on my heart revival and that he's speaking about revival coming. And that prayer has really stayed with me. I've been listening to uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones preaches on revival that he preached in 1959, uh, the hundred year kind of uh, anniversary of the last revival that occurred in the UK in 1859. And he's preaching into uh, the importance of seeking after it. And what really struck me as I've been listening to it is one of the things that you find is that usually there are two key ingredients that come before revival. One is 
society in dire need and two is an awakening in the church to prayer. You find those two key fundamentals seem to be outworked. Society are very aware of their needs, whether that be because of uh, the depravity of society, the, the uh, kind of exposure and, and uh, abuse of, of certain people groups in society, of financial crisis, of, of severe sickness, uh, whatever it is that, that makes people just aware of the fact that they are vulnerable. And it seems to also be at the same time as stirring the church to pray. To pray, to say, God, we need you. We, we find that you are our hope, you're our confidence, you're our security, you're, you're our anchor. The church prays and we see God move. Listen, friends, I believe we are in such a time as this. Society is so aware of the needs and the fragilities and the pain and the fears around us. And the church has been stirred to pray. Today, as you watch this video, the, the many movements of churches have called a day of prayer, 7 p.m. tonight, join in, pray that God would move in our nation and in the nations, that we would see the vulnerable protected and cared for, that we would see the doctors and the emergency workers and the schools and, and everyone else would be served well. But more than that, we would see a move of God in our nation and the nations. That's the hope we have, friends. We want to be culture shapers where we need to be a people that are full of the love of God. Make Jesus your priority. In, in the midst of all that's going on, the first thing we should be doing in the morning is getting into the Word and praying. Not getting our phones and looking for the updates. Not getting on WhatsApp and listening to what other people are saying. Not even checking in on how family are. Those things are important, but let's be a people that start in a place of dependency on God. Stir yourself in your prayers and, and in your thought life and in the things of God. Fill your heart with those things. Let's be a people that are full of the Spirit and are led by the Spirit. Our hope in this season is the fact that we have a security in Christ. You are who you are because Christ has made you who you are. Not because you've earned it, not because you've worked hard, not because you continue to strive, but because Jesus has done it all. And so this first point, let me encourage you to encourage one another. In these times of uncertainty and fear and unknown, let's speak the truth of Christ into one another's hearts. Let's encourage one another in our identity. Small groups, as you connect in however way you do that, whether that be Zoom or Skype or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, or however you do it, encourage one another in our identity in Christ. Remind one another to keep ourselves in the love of God. Remind one another to fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. And let's allow God to do a miracle in us that we would be a people that are secure and confident and peaceful and hopeful, even in the midst of a situation as massive and as terrifying as what we are facing right now. So we see God is our security. But secondly, from this passage, I want to emphasize the fact that we aren't just secure in Christ, we are distinct in Christ. You see, the Bible tells us that when you come to know Jesus, you become a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. You're no longer your old self. There is a radical transformation that has occurred. And what we see here is part of that is you have become salt and you have become light. They are different by their nature to everything else around them. Light stands out when it is shining. It's either light or it's dark. There's no in between really um, in that way. Salt stands out. The taste of salt is obvious when you pull it into something. That's the call of Christ over our lives, friends. That as we, as we dwell on our union in Christ and our security in Christ, the fruit of that will be an increase in our distinctiveness. Not because we try hard, but because Jesus ever more grows in our hearts and is at work in us and changing our thinking and our thoughts. We walk by the Spirit. We are those that have the fruit of the Spirit outworked in us and the gifts of the Spirit being displayed. We will grow in our distinctiveness. And so we are called to be a people that shine. And yet one of the biggest dangers we will face in this time is the potential to compromise, the potential to stay silent. I'm in self-isolation. I need to just look after myself for these next two weeks. That's not the mindset of the believer. I'm in self-isolation, how can I encourage others? I wanna honor those of you that have already sought to do this, whether that be through uh, social media and putting posts up that aren't um, the glossy glittering image that our world is used to, but are real and genuine and hope-filled. I want to honour those of you that have already tried to find creative ways of encouraging others to fix their eyes on Jesus. Keep going, friends. Strive to be distinct 
in this season. I want to encourage those of you that have gone out of your way to message others, to encourage them and see how they are, to speak into the lives of your neighbours. I want to encourage you to be those that are distinct in this time. The world needs the church to shine. The earth needs the saltiness of the church in this season. And so friends, let's be those that strive to do this. As I was preparing, as I was reading this, I was really struck at the purpose of salt and light. Now, there's lots of different purposes. I just want to pull out uh, one for each. What struck me about salt is that one of the factors and one of the key roles salt had back in this day was it was a, something that would preserve foods. You put it, salt around it, it would last longer. There's a preservation that salt brings. And I feel like there is a call over us as a church to be a people that preserve. There's a biblical mandate on us, church. In James chapter 1, verse 27, James says that true religion is caring for the widows and the orphans. True religion is caring for the vulnerable and those at risk in your society. We are very aware of who are the vulnerable and at risk at the moment. We've been given very clear guidelines from the government and from health advice on who those people are. And actually, I do believe we have a responsibility to care for them. I've loved seeing the mobilisation from the Make Lunch team to ensure that those families that we have had the privilege of serving for the last few years in providing free meals during the school holidays and ensuring that the children are fed well and actually the families are fed well uh, through this time. With the changes that are going on, it's not possible for kind of a meeting in, in one place. And so actually instead... We're looking to mobilise the saints. God bless you, every single one of you that has responded and has uh, got food and, and delivered it. And we're starting to build that so that we can send care packages out to those people. God bless you, those of you who heard about a friend that was in self-isolation and went to the shop and got them some food and took it round. That is outworking this call to be those that preserve, that we care for those around us. My wife, Catherine, is such an inspiration to me in this. She's telling me, uh, the other day I was uh, in the offices working with a team and she was at home and a Tesco delivery man came uh, and bless him, he, uh, she just got chatting to him and I love the fact that she was intentional in encouraging him and speaking into him, honouring him uh, and bringing life into him. I've been reading about other people that have deliberately ordered more in their Tesco shop to give to the driver as a gift. God bless you for what you're doing and encouraging. How can we be those? You know, you've seen uh, encouraging the NHS workers or the police or our teachers or whatever it is. How can we be those that seek to care and preserve people around us how can we serve people I loved seeing this week a need arise of someone who needed to get to the airport so that they could get home uh, and be with their family and again straight away people offering to cover and, and give to cover taxi fees to get them to the airport people respond to the needs God bless you church I have I have delighted in seeing the heart of this church flourishing and wanting to preserve the good of those around us our Chartham location have been leading the charge on this. This week, they've been out leafleting through doors, putting things through. Hey, uh, you know, my name, I'm part of this church. This is my name and I can help in these ways. Let me know. And they've been, they've been having amazing responses from people. Just like, this is incredible. Thank you so much for being willing to serve. I'm, I'm blown away and overcome by it. God bless you, Charlton. Keep going in seeking to preserve the people around us. We need to be those that protect I want to honour your response, church, and the decision we've made to not gather today. Thank you for your maturity in handling that and seeing that actually we're not making this decision out of fear. We're basing this decision on faith and love. And we feel we have a biblical mandate to protect the vulnerable in our society, in our church and beyond that. And we felt like by gathering, we'd be putting them at risk. And so we have sought to do Thank you, small groups, for your proactive uh, response. In, okay, we can't meet physically because we want to protect. How can we still connect? God bless you, church. Let's keep striving to be those that protect. Protect your neighbours. Protect your friends. Protect your children. Protect the vulnerable and those at risk in this time. Let's be salt that preserves. But also let's be light that illuminates. It's really important you hear this, friends. Listen, in Acts 8, chapter 4. We see that the church has just faced persecution and they've been scattered. Now, we're not facing persecution. We're facing sickness that has meant and pestilence that has meant that we have been scattered. But we are scattered. We are no longer able to meet gathered together in that place. We're scattered, just like in the book of Acts in many ways. And in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, it says, Those who were scattered went around preaching the word of God. Friends, your love and care and preservation of those around you is massively important. But the best way that you can love and care and preserve them is by illuminating the truth of Christ to those around us. 
please don't believe the lie that the most loving thing you can do is give someone some food. That's massively loving. But the most loving thing you can do is point people to Christ. Friends, we need to be those that seek to illuminate Jesus to the world around us. Can I encourage you? Use every means that you have. If you're still able to get out and, and be out with, uh, in a safe way, with a social distance, whether that be at the park or you've got to go to the supermarket, how can you illuminate people to Christ? I decided when I went to the supermarket yesterday, I'm going to smile at every single person I come into contact with. One of our eight S's, obviously, in a safe contact way, one of our eight S's is to smile and to be a, be a peace bringer. Blessed are the peacemakers. We're going to bring peace into people's lives. And so I just was intentionally smiling at people. Hey, it's okay. There's hope. I didn't get to talk to anyone about Jesus, but I believe that that's one way of doing it. I want to honour those of you that have, have used your social media accounts to preach Christ in this season. Friends, I'd love to see more and more the presence of Christians online proclaiming and illuminating the good news of Jesus as we shine our lights. Those of you that are have, have kind of been taking your kids to school and you've got friends, you've got WhatsApp groups with other mums and how can you illuminate Christ to those people in these different ways as you're Skyping family that don't know Jesus, friends that don't know Jesus. Let's be a people that seek to shine the light of Christ and illuminate Jesus to the world around us. We want to be a people that seek the common good. One of the sayings that really struck me a few years ago by a, a pastor called Alan Scott, he said, talking about his church, he was based in Ireland at the time. He says, we don't want to be the best church in this city. We want to be a church that is best for this city. That's always stayed with me and that's become my prayer for us as a people. I don't want the city church to have a reputation of, oh yeah, that's the best church. Don't really care. That's so subjective. I want the city church to be known as that is a church that is best for people, that we put people first that we genuinely care and are considerate about others in Chartham, in Canterbury and Whitstable. How can we seek the best for our community and for those around us? And so let's be those that seek to give light to all, to shine our light to all, however that is for you. To your children, how can you shine the light of Christ in this time? How can you speak the hope of the gospel into your kids? To your teenagers, as, as suddenly school's been closed and exams have been cancelled, how can you speak the hope of Jesus and the confidence of Christ into their lives? To your elderly relatives that may be terrified of what's going on, how do you speak Christ into their lives? To your neighbours and to your friends that don't know Christ, how do you point them to Jesus? Friends, this is urgent times and so let's ensure that we are illuminating Jesus as much as we can. And then it ends, Jesus says, you're the salt and the light. And he finally, in verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Friends, that's our desire. We want to be a people that give glory to our Father in heaven. We want to be a people that have a privilege of seeing others come to know God the Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, and bow the knee in adoration and giving glory to him. Let's be a people that strive to point people to him through our blessing and our actions. We can point people to Jesus. Through our words, we can point people to Jesus. What we say and how we say it are massively important in this season. Think about how you are communicating to the world around us. How we sacrificially give and love and serve the church and beyond. Friends, just because we may have to go through social distancing doesn't mean we're going through social isolation. Fight for community. Champion community, champion serving one another and loving one another. Small groups care for one another in this time. Be proactive in looking out for one another. Find out how each other are and be proactive in doing that in the world around us. I am praying for you, church. I am confident in Christ our Saviour and in his plans and purposes for us as a people. Let me encourage you. Stand firm in the security you have in your union with Christ and shine the light and the distinctive taste that Christ has given you. Let's be a people that are full of faith in this time of fear. Let me pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you that we can know you. What a hope and what a blessing and a gift that is. And Lord, I pray for every single person in our church family and every single person that lives in Canterbury, Chartham, Whitstable and the surrounding area, Lord God, I pray that you would do a great work in us. Lord God, reveal to us our security in Christ. Save us from being those that strive and help us to be those that rest and abide in your love and in your goodness. 
and Lord God, allow us to be those that really do stand out in this season. Not through trying, but just through being who you've made us to be. Be with us, help us, O oh God, in this time. In your name. Amen.